Thumbs up. No more thumbs down. Thumbs up. Let's go. Hit 320. No one will boo. So there you have it. Francisco Lindor was trolled by a Mets fan yesterday. And just a little update for you guys. Lindor and Baez both met on the field today with reporters and they apologized to the fans. And even more damage control, the owner of the Mets, Steve Cohen, on Twitter is saying, hey, props to the players for apologizing to the fans. Let's go win two ball games today. So to me, I mean, I don't know about you guys, especially if you're a Mets fan, but this situation's old news now. It's I'm done with it. Especially considering it should have never been news to begin with. Javier Baez should have never said anything. Wait, anyway, what's going on, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. If this is your first time on the channel, we do this every single day. So don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, as well as use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off any baseball game that you're going to anytime soon. Robbie Reagan of the Blue Jays makes history, and it was no small feat, so make sure you guys stick around for that. Bryce Harper is essentially Babe Ruth versus his former team, the Nationals, this year. And then also Fernando Tatis Jr. as well as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. They're showing that they're still going for the MVPs. But for Vladdy's case, it might be too late. The reason why I say that is because Shohei Otani did his thing yesterday. And we're going to talk about it in just a few moments because we got to recap the first few innings because it was wild. So the Yankees go up 2 to nothing, And then Joe Adele ropes an RBI single through the left side hole. And then Captain Jack Mayfield. Now he's not having the best season offensively even with runners in scoring position but he seems to be fairly clutch although the numbers don't back that up I think that he's clutch especially with the glove Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton they come right back to tie it up in the next inning but then Shohei Otani like I mentioned unties it with his 42nd home run this one went 431 feet off a lefty that is not easy to do although it was right down the middle Juan Lagarde channels his inner Vladimir Guerrero senior we all know that Vlad could hit any ball whether it was in the dirt or four feet up. Able to turn this into an RBI triple and then Giancarlo Stanton, while the Angels were up by two, he says enough of that with a two-run shot. He is now batting 326 with nine home runs in the month of August and Lagares does it yet again. He knocks in Brandon Marsh and Rizal Iglesias, Iggy. He mows down the Yankees offense one, two, three for his 28th save of the year. And the Yankees, after winning 13 in a row, are now on a three-game losing streak. Now, one thing I want to mention is the fact that Pedro Martinez is he's basically saying that Shohei Otani should be able to pitch if he's able to hit as well and essentially he's accusing him of ducking the Yankees and calling him a coward so let me know in the comment section down below are you on the side of Pedro Martinez by saying hey if you can hit you should be able to pitch today against the Yankees or are you on the side of kind of common sense where he got hit in the hand by a fastball he's gonna need a few days to pitch I think that makes a lot of sense to me I'm not a doctor but I'd go with that route all right let's talk about the Rays versus the Red Sox because there was a little bit of history in this game Game as well. Brandon Lau smacked his 31st home run of the year and he has been seeing the ball very well against Nick Pavetta. Bobby Dahlback, speaking of seeing the ball well, hit his 18th home run so his OPS plus is finally at 100 so he is a average hitter but he has been smoking hot the last two weeks. Austin Meadows now has 92 RBIs and Brandon Lau drives in another RBI in the fourth and Luis Patino almost goes six innings only allows one earned run on one walk with five strikeouts. Juan DeFranco he came into his final at bat 0 for 4 so he had a 29 game on base streak and he extends it. He gets the job done 30 games consecutively. He has been on base. He bat flips that moment. He doesn't bat flip the single. A lot of Red Sox fans are like, wow, Wander Franco is a D bag. He just bat flipped a single. No, he bat flipped getting on base. So. Enough of that. Mickey Mantle at 20 years old got on base 36 games in a row. So Wander is just six games away from that. Anytime you're in the same conversation as Mickey Mantle, you're doing something crazy. The Rays are now 9-1 and one in their last 10 games. And yeah, I was very, very wrong on them. I thought the Rays were going to be a little worse. I mean, they're just as good. Blue Jays versus the Orioles. We're going to talk about Robbie Ray Gun making history. But before we do that, I guess we do have to show Ryan Mountcastle belting his 25th home run of the season because through his first 149 games, he has 30 home runs and a 125 OPS plus. That is very solid. So for me, Ryan Mountcastle and Ali Rutschman, along with Trey Mancini, that is going to be a fierce lineup going forward. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he comes in clutch with his 37th home run and Robbie Ray Gun ends the sixth inning with his 200 strikeout already of the 2021 season. Bo Bichette, he drives in an RBI on a single and Te Oscar Hernandez drives in two as Bo was flying around the bases. He just gets ahead of the throw. Robbie Ray goes seven innings, has 10 strikeouts, 
strikeouts on only one walk, and he becomes, I can't believe this is actually a thing, the fastest pitcher in MLB history to 1,000 strikeouts, and he has an 11.2 strikeouts per nine for his career, which is also a record just ahead of Chris Sale's 11.1. So Robbie Ray, his problem before was always walking people. He's finally able to control his nasty stuff, and he is striking out people like crazy. Vlad Jr. drives in three more RBIs on his 38th home run of the year, and Jordan Romano picks up his 14th save. The Jays are the opposite of the Yankees. They're on a three-game winning streak and they're only four and a half games back of the wild card but it feels like they've been four and a half games back for a while now. The Brewers versus the Giants. Omar Narvaez starts off the scoring with a single to bring in Christian Yelich and Corbin Burns. He strikes out a few early and then drives in an RBI in the second inning. Now fast forward to the sixth when he legit did not miss a spot the entire sixth inning. He ends up striking out nine does not allow a single walk lowers his ERA to 2.27 the guy has been sensational. Luis Urias adds an insurance run for good measure and Josh Hader his 28th save brings Milwaukee to their 80th win of the year and of all teams that they beat they beat the San Francisco Giants so the Giants lost the series to Atlanta and now they're on a two-game losing streak after losing to the Brewers they better pick it up as well because the Dodgers Ooh, they're coming. Yesterday was Mookie Monday and his mom threw out the first pitch. Now, it could have been Muncie Monday because he goes yard off a lefty. I mean, he got all of this one. That was homer number 29. And then Will Smith, who could be a sneaky MVP candidate as well, now has 22 home runs and he is always delivering in the clutch. Mookie, he comes in huge on Mookie Monday. He delivers with a home run and Corey Seager takes an outside pitch 400 feet for an opposite field home run. Julio Urias was locked in until he wasn't when he gives up a hit and then back-to-back -back home runs to Jorge Soler and Freddie Freeman but seven strikeouts no walks and six innings that is pretty solid Adam Duvall hits the seventh home run of the game so seven home runs total every single run and yesterday's five to three contest was scored via a home run so the Dodgers with the Giants loss are now just one and a half game back of first place Who's going to be that team going forward? It's definitely not going to be the Padres, but the Padres do pick up a big W yesterday. As Fernando Tatis Jr. rips his 36th home run. This guy is so good. Then you have Austin Nola and Trent Grisham making it 3 to nothing, And good for Adam Frazier. He has been a trash can. I hate to say it like that, but he's been horrible ever since the Padres acquired him. He brings in a run, and Chris Paddock was pretty good in his return. Almost goes five innings, has five strikeouts, only allows one run. Hosmer, he takes liftoff in the seventh inning. Inning, and like we've mentioned all year, Arizona does not give up. Cattell Marte does his best Jack Mayfield impression with this Grand Slam. He is hitting 354 with an almost 160 OPS plus so far this year. Cattell Marte is a machine. Fernando Tatis has an RBI on a double, and I just want to mention that Tatis made history again. He is the first 22-year-old in MLB history to have 36 home runs in his first 100 games of a season. He has 81 RBIs, 24 stolen bases, and a 176 OPS plus. I mean, if he stayed healthy, this would be one of the greatest offensive seasons for a shortstop ever. Like prime A-Rod numbers. Bryce Harper, in my opinion right now, is tied with Fernando Tatis for the front runner in the NL MVP conversation. He rips a curveball for his 26th home run. He now is hitting 415 with seven home runs against Washington this year. Those are godly numbers. Freddie Galvis makes it three to nothing on a fielder's choice. And then Kiebert Ruiz, who is destroying people in AAA, he came over in the Trey Turner, Max Scherzer trade, the number one prospect in all of baseball. He pops up with the bases loaded, but you know who doesn't pop up with the bases loaded? Ronald Torres. he gets the the job done and he clears the bases in the third with a triple and Carter Keboom I know the Nationals lost but he might be getting comfortable he has five home runs and also speaking of comfortable Bamboo Brad felt very comfortable in the batter's box yesterday with his 14th home run and Jose Alvarado picks up his fifth save for the Phillies who are now just three games back of the wild card Paul Goldschmidt wants some MVP votes as well because the Cardinals are creeping up he now has a 330 batting average and a 161 OPS plus in the second half so his second half is still worse than Tati and Harper for the entire season, but I just wanted to shout him out because he has been a monster. Kyle Farmer hits his 12th home run, easily a career best, and then Tyler O'Neill answers back by driving in his 50th RBI on an infield single. John Lester dominated yesterday, six and a third innings, only one hit allowed with five strikeouts, and then the bullpen only allows one base runner the rest of the way. Gallegos, who's been shaky in safe situations, he gets the job done. The Cardinals, out of nowhere, are now just two and a half games back of second place for the wild card in the National 
National League. The Padres are a half game back and the Reds, they're barely hanging on after losing their third consecutive game. The Astros faced off against the Mariners yesterday and your Don Alvarez was gifted an RBI single. I thought they maybe were going to call an error, but this was a tough grab nonetheless as Jared Kelnick cannot pull it in. And then Kyle Tucker delivers with a sacrifice fly, but just barely as Kelnick shows off the cannon. Chris Flexen was pretty okay. Five and two thirds with four strikeouts, allows a few runs. Brooks Raley replaces Garcia. Luis Garcia went five innings with six strikeouts. Remember the last time Brooks Haley came in against Dylan Moore? Yeah, Dylan Moore came in clutch with a grand slam and it happened again. Dylan Moore gives the Mariners a lead, but then Kyle Tucker his 73rd RBI ties it up, and Jake Myers brings in Tucker for a 4-3 lead as Presley nails down his 22nd save, the M's. The M's are now tied with the J's at four and a half games back of the wild card. Playoff race is going to be absolutely madness for the final three weeks of the season. And then the final two games from yesterday, two games that don't matter, but they were pretty fun. Derek Hill, he starts off the scoring for Detroit with a no-doubt home run, and then Akil Badu, his helmet flies off on his first double since the IL. You guys know, anytime Jorge Mateo or Akil Kiel Badu do something. I like to talk about them. They're just a lot of fun to watch. I love their speed. Jorge Polanco singles in Byron Buxton and then Josh Donaldson gets all of this one. A two-run bomb to center. That gives the Twins a 3-1 lead and Zach Short, he makes it a one-run deficit, but the Tigers cannot get the job done as Alex Calme picks up his 10th save. He's been all right lately. Now, a quote from AJ Hinch. I just want to mention this. It got me hyped up. It got me scared as a Cleveland fan, but as a baseball fan, I would want this guy as my manager. He basically said, this offseason, you're either going to sign with us or we're going to beat you. Yo, that's crazy. And then last but not least, Trevor Story showed off the range yesterday in Texas where he was actually born. He was born in Irving, Texas. We'll talk about why that matters in just a second. So he was just showing off with this range. DJ Peters has been solid so far for the Rangers. Solid defense, all right hitting. And AJ Alexi, his debut was fantastic. Five shutout innings, only one hit against the Rockies offense. That is pretty good. You have Tavares hitting a 430 foot moonshot. My goodness. And Solak has a two run missile of his own. Trevor Story was the only Rocky to show up yesterday. He had two home runs and all three RBIs for Colorado as Barlow secures his third save for the Rangers. Now Story, even though he's having a down season, he is going to get paid next year. And honestly, it could be from the Rangers because he's from Texas. The Rangers, they need a shortstop. It's a match made in heaven. All right, everyone. Well, that does it for today's MLB recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. Save yourself some money if you're going to any ball games. Use code fuzzy on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off and enjoy this day in MLB history. I still don't know how Bo Jackson did this while flat-footed. That's into right field. That's a can of corn. Bo Jackson is there. As here's a throw. Gallego tagging it. Bo gets it. What a throw by Bo Jackson. Standing flat-footed.